Hey everyone. So one of the things that I mentioned as a strength of R is the fact that in addition to being able to use it for Python data science, it's also very easy to use it for a lot of other languages. So what I want to do today is just walk through briefly how we set up R to work with VS Studio in case you want to use VS Studio not just for Python data science applications, but also working in R. Um, in particular, I'm going to show you both how to set up VS Code to work with a regular R console, which you're probably used to from um, R Studio. In addition, I'm also going to show you how to set up R against an augmented console that has a little bit better syntax highlighting and a few extra bells and whistles. Um, so let's get to it. Okay. So in order to get this set up, the first thing we need to do is install two extensions into our system. Um, and those are going to be R, which you can see I've already installed, and R LSP client, which I've already installed. The RSP client is what allows VS Code to do things like check your code for errors as you're typing it. So it's a really nice thing to add. Now, once we have the extensions installed, the next thing that we have to do is um, connect them to our R installation. So these are utilities for allowing VS Code to talk to R, but just like with Python, we still need to have an independent R installation. So I'm assuming you have R installed somewhere. Um, if you don't, you need to do that before we get started. So the next thing we're gonna do is go into the extension settings for the R package. And we're going to change a couple things. The first one is that we need to tell, oops, looking, looking, there we go. We need to tell it the R path. So the R path is where to find the executable for your um, R package, basically where R is actually living at the level that VS Code can call it. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is bring up a new window here and open R. Now, if you don't like opening R from the command line, it's entirely fine to open it by double clicking on its, uh, double -clicking on its icon or using RS or R Studio. All that's important is that we open up R. Zoom this up a little bit. And then we're gonna run the command r.home paren bin. And this is gonna tell us where the R binary, the actual executable for R lives. We're gonna copy that path. We're gonna put it here. And then this is important, we do slash R at the very end. Basically what R was giving us before was the folder where the executable lives and the executable is always called R, so we just need to put it in there. Obviously if you're working in Windows, you put this in the Windows tab, um, not in the Mac tab. All right, so now that we have that in place, if I open a new file and let's just call it temp.r We can immediately see that VS Code now recognizes it as an R file. It's doing syntax highlighting and it's starting to do linting and looking for errors in the things you write. So for example, if I were to write hello, but then I don't close it and then I start trying to write other stuff, You'll see both that the syntax highlighting is going wrong and we get a red squiggly because there's an open but unclosed um, double quote here. So we're now up and running basically with R. We're in good shape. Now, if you want to run your code from here, there's two ways to do it. One is if you come up here to this play button in the top right and you click it. Oops, sorry, this was open from before. You should not see that. So if you click this, you will see that VS Code is gonna open an R session and it's going to um, run the file in its completeness. So our file only says print, so that's all it's gonna do. Just a reminder, if um, you find that when this opens, your R session is down here on the bottom and you don't like it, you just right click and move the panel wherever you want the panel to be. And so now we can either write code over here if we just wanna play with our R session over there. Or alternatively, we also have the ability, just as we did in Python, to run selections. So if I select a line or leave my cursor on the line and I do Command Enter, it'll run that individual line of code. 
over in the R session. So now at this point, you are up and running with R in um, VS Code. The other thing that I want to flag is that some people may not like having command enter as the keyboard shortcut. So those are modifiable settings. Personally, I usually work um, or I work in Python and Jupyter so much that I like having the same keyboard shortcuts for running a selection of code. So I use shift enter for everything. So let me show you how I would change that setting. Um, I would open the command palette with command shift P or alternatively, you can come down here and click on the gear and click on command palette. I'll do open keyboard shortcuts. I'm gonna search, initially it'll just look like this. I'm gonna search for R selection. And what you'll see is there's actually two entries here for keyboard shortcuts for running an R selection. And the difference turns out to be that one of these, which we can't quite see at this level of zoom. Let me, there we go. Uh, the first one of these is if the file is an R file. The second is if the file is an R markdown file. You can make these different if you want, but I like them the same. So I'm gonna double click here, type shift enter. Double click, shift enter. And so now if I go back to my file and I wanna run a line of code, now I type shift enter instead of command enter and we're in good shape. Okay, so that's the basic of getting R up and installed in your system. The other thing that I wanna mention is um, I found more and more people are interested in using augmented um, uh, consoles for R. So instead of this basic R console without any syntax highlighting or any kind of rich content, they like to use a tool like Radian. Um, so Radian is just this nice package for trying to make your R console a, look a little bit better. Let me open up a window to show you the Radian page. Radian is not a unique enough word that you can find it without doing stuff. There we go. But if we go to their VS code, you can see it has a lot of um, uh, suggestions as you start to type thing. It has a lot more syntax highlighting. And so there's a number of different features that people often find a little bit more appealing. So I'm just gonna walk you through kind of how we set this up because there's one little trick and gotcha that can get you in trouble. Again, if you're happy working in a regular our console, you're done, you're good. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do is install Radian. Radian is actually a Python package. And so um, the first thing that we're gonna have to do is um, uh, using conda or pip, we need to install Radian into our system. So I'm gonna open a new terminal window. I guess I can actually so I'm gonna open a new terminal window here in VS Code with, oh, right. Create a new window, and then you would run conda install dash C, conda forge, Radian. I have this installed, so I'm not gonna run this again, but that's how you would install Radian on your system. The next thing that we have to do is figure out um, what the exact path is to Radian so that VS Code knows how to call it. So in the same way we needed to figure out where R lived on your computer, we need to figure out where Radian lives on your computer. So on a Mac, using a bash command line, it's pretty easy. Once you've installed Radian, you just type which Radian and you'll get back the path. So what I'm gonna do is copy this. I'm gonna go back to the extensions open these extension settings. I'm gonna scroll down until we get to, sorry, scroll up to our term for Mac and I'm gonna put this path in there. Um, our term is the name for any augmented R console that you're working with with the system. The other little tweak that we need to make sure to make is we have to delete these R term options. The two defaults are unfortunately not compatible with Radian, so that becomes a problem. And then, Finally, we need to go up to the top and turn on bracketed paste. This just has to do with how commands are sent to Radian when we're trying to work with it. Okay, so now we're almost there, but there's a good chance, not 100% certain, but it will often be the case, that if you were to try to run um, an R script now, 
And actually, I think I still have open my R console, so it's just going to do weird things. So if you have open an R session, close it first. But if I try to run it, I'm going to get a weird error where something pops up and this goes away. The problem is that we need to um, give VS Studio Code, sorry, VS Code just a little bit more information about where our R is installed. And so the way we're going to do that is by opening our command palette. We're going to open our settings from the JSON file, so not the pretty user interface, but the actual raw interface. And we're going to add a new entry into our settings that looks like this. Um, I will leave a copy of this down in the comments below. This is obviously for a Mac. If you're working on Windows, this is just .windows. And what we're doing is saying that when it opens up a new terminal, Make sure that terminal knows about a variable called our home, and that our home is supposed to point to the top level of the R installation we have on our system. Usually, you can get away with just taking the R path you put in before and deleting the last two files of it. So, right, library frameworks, R frameworks, resources, and delete the bin and the R. But just to be sure, my recommendation is that um, we open up R again, just regular old time r. We run that command r home. And this time we don't put anything in the parentheses. We hit enter. We copy that link. Then we put it down here. All right. Now, again, make sure that you don't have a running r session before we try to run new experiments. We save that. We go back here. And now if I type shift enter, we're going to see that VS Code is opening up this um, Radiant console with the augmented interface. So like I said, not, not something you have to do if you don't want to, um, but that's the functionality that's available if you do. Thanks so much.